Hey guys, Shane here at CrossFit Jeff, helping you go further, faster in fitness. And today's topic is about the bark being worse than the bite. Now, I bring this up because I have issued a challenge to the CrossFit HF community. I started a workout last week and it consists of a 7,000 meter bike or C2 bike, a 3,000 500 meter ski and a 1,750 meter row. Now on the surface, and what I mean by the bark being worse than the bite, that sounds a little aggressive, like a bark would, like a little bit intimidating for those who don't do distance or aren't distance athletes by any shape of the word, um, or don't consider themselves to be very good at longer distance workouts or longer timed workouts. Now, I don't consider myself to be someone who is great at long distance, but I know and I've learned the fact that the bite is always like, well, the bark, sorry, is worse than the bite in these situations. And what I mean by that is the 7,000 meter bike isn't that overwhelming, but the 3,500 meter ski seemed to be barking at me the most in this workout. And then when I actually did the workout, it, it wasn't anywhere near as bad as I had made it in my own mind. Now, I've been trying to talk to a few members about doing this workout, about taking it on, about challenging themselves, and they're overwhelming themselves with the distance. They're thinking, oh, I can't possibly do that. You know what? If you don't stop and you keep going and you don't give in, you will get to the end. What tends to happen is we let our expectations about what we should do start to rule our minds and rule our thoughts, and then it really ruins the experience. Now, this workout for me, when I started doing it, I didn't do it to set some ridiculous time. I wasn't going to the Olympics for this event, right? Like this had nothing to do, this gave me no worth in my life. It was just a way of getting a challenge out there. And if I had, when I had low expectations of my overall outcome, I really enjoyed the actual process. I enjoyed the row, I enjoyed the ski, I actually enjoyed the bike. I sat on the bike and I watched, um, I think I was watching the Torium Pro at the time, it was up on the big screen in our gym and I started watching that and just started riding the bike. And coincidentally enough, it was the reverse triathlon from the Torium Pro that was on, so it was kind of fitting that they were riding a bike and I was riding a bike. But regardless, what happened is I'd worked myself up a little bit and then I realized that if I'm going to do that, then I'm going to ruin the experience. And so what I've been trying to do to a few of my clients and get their heads around it a little bit is to say, hey, here's the challenge. And, and the challenge for the gym means that I'm going to nominate two people. Those two people are going to perform the challenge. They get to nominate one male and one female each. So then those four people will then take on the challenge next. So I start, then two people, and then four people. And then those four people can challenge and so on. So it sort of, sort of grows a little bit. And the beauty of that is that everyone's going to probably experience it sooner rather than later, that the fact that the bark of this workout, the way it sounds, the way it's put together is way more worse or is worse than the actual bite of the workout. The workout, it can hurt as much as you want it to hurt. If you want to push yourself to the absolute breaking point, yeah, it's going to hurt if you push yourself as hard as you can. But the fact of the matter is, we can always get through it. We can always achieve it. And I wanted to use this moment right now for the Shane Talks topic to say, hey, why don't you start treating most of your workouts like that? Why don't you look at these workouts and say, you know what? This seems intense. This, this workout's barking quite loud. It's like a dog, right? Like a chihuahua. Like we have a, we have a chihuahua at home and she barks pretty aggressively like and, and relentlessly at you. And it can be, not that it's that intimidating, it's more annoying, but you know, you, you get my point. If they're barking and barking and barking, it becomes overwhelming. And then it's like, well, if they bite me right now, that could be quite savage. And yet, then you realize that the dog that's barking at you or the worker that's barking at you, once you actually complete it, once you go to pat it, it's fine. Once you start to get close to it, once you start to achieve it, lower your expectations and start to put one foot in front of the other and just get the job done, you realize that the bark was never as bad as the bite. And I wanted to use that reference more so for all of the CrossFit workouts that we do. I have a lot of people that come into the gym and they feel sick because they're overwhelmed with, oh, this workout's going to be so tough and so challenging. Guess what? Yes, it can be if you want it to be. If you want to go push yourself, and there's nothing wrong with that. If you want it to, to hurt, make it hurt, then do so. That's great. It's an awesome way of making a workout more challenging by pushing yourself. However, if that's not what you need in your life. That's not what you want in your life. Just remember that the bark of this workout is nowhere near as bad as the bite. And if you want to pull back a bit and you want to do what you need to do to get it done, then that is a much better approach. 
Don't let it ruin your experience. Don't let it ruin your overall journey. And definitely don't let it derail you because a lot of people will gen- generally steer away from challenges like this and they won't even try. And when you don't try it, you're never going to succeed. You have to at least try to be slightly successful. And I'm so pumped for a few of my members to give this work out a go because I believe in them so much. I believe that these people are capable of more than this, much, much, much more than this. And yet their limiting self-belief has had them stuck below this challenge forever. In some cases, some of my clients have been training for 50 years and they are finding that this is now, well, this is too hard for them, that this is a challenge. Man, they've survived way harder shit than this. Trust me, you've gone through losing family members. You've gone through health issues. You've gone through, in some cases, childbirth for some of my clients. You've gone through some some dramatic shit in life that a 7,000-meter bike, a 3,500-meter uh, ski, and a 1,750-meter row should not be what stops you in life. In fact, it should just be a little bump in the road. You're like, oh, that was, that was a bump. I'm over it. I'm done. It's good. Now, my message for you guys that are listening, start to look at areas in your life where you can actually take on a challenge that might scare you. The fact that it's fearful, the fact that you're a little bit afraid from it, of it means that you probably need to start to give it a go because you realize that once you start understanding it, you get some skill, knowledge, and experience about what you're trying to accomplish, you realize that it's actually not as bad as you made up in your head. In fact, you saw this challenge and this thing is such a big barking, big rabid dog that now all of a sudden it's just a little tiny chihuahua that just wants to be patted. It's nowhere near as bad as you made up. Its bite is not even there. It doesn't even bite. And it reminds me of a story that I once heard just before I wrap things up here. It's a story about a guy that would get off the bus and he would walk home and every single day he would walk past a fence with a dog and that dog would literally bark at him and it would bark and bark and bark and one day it got out. And this guy's running for his life, running, 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 running. He makes it to the end of the street, turns around, picks up a brick and goes to hit this dog with it and realizes the dog was all bark and no bite because it had no teeth. As the dog got closer, he realized that that dog had no teeth. It was all gum and it was barking and he was terrified and running for his life away from something that was never going to hurt him and that was only ever going to, what, gum him to death. It was a good story and a good reminder for me that a lot of life events are like that. We make out that things are hugely uh, problematic and we have these massive issues and all of a sudden we've gotten through it and we're like, oh wow, that was last week that we accomplished that problem that we had worked ourselves up for months over and the bite was nowhere to be seen. It didn't even bite us. It was a dog with no teeth. So on that, guys, on that note, I want you to remember, take on more challenges than you think you can handle because I'm positive that in life you've handled more challenges than the one you're about to take on. And you're only ever given challenges in life that you are capable of taking on. So embrace that, give something a go. And if you are taking on a challenge at the moment, I'd love to hear about it. In comments, DM me, whatever you need to do, message me, let me know that you've heard this and that you are connecting with me and you're letting me know about some of the challenges that you're taking on. What are some of the things that you are trying to do to make you better, to challenge you and things that you might be fearful of, you're realizing that they're nothing to be afraid of, they're nothing to be scared of. And now you've realized it because you've faced it head on. And it's like that analogy I just gave before about the dog chasing this guy down the street, him turning to face the dog and realizing that it had nothing, no, no teeth, nothing to bite him with. And it was all in his mind that he'd made that up. It was a scary because of his thoughts about a barking dog. So on that note, guys, at nine minutes, I keep these under 10 minutes, hopefully, uh, most of the time. Until next time, guys, I hopefully will see you in the gym.